you just look then you get to the point when you're older and you've grown you want to learn to read your books on your own first you learn the letters then you learn the words then you sign it out when you are so sure then you read a sentence then you read a page then you read a book you read more as your age in the time you grow your mind will grow read line after line and you find you go discover wonderful places and amazing lands with a desire to learn and a book in your hand Open a book, take a look, start to read, start to feed your mind, plant a seed, plant a seed, watch it grow, you can go anywhere, anytime in your mind, find a book to take you there. See, the more you read, the more your brain grows, the more your brain grows, the more your brain knows. So kids of all ages, discover the greatest, awake and start turning the pages, and if you like books and you want some more, you don't have to buy any at the store. You can take a trip to your local library, check out some books, and there you get plenty. It's where you pick up a book, it's where you drop off a book. They have picture books, and they have pop-up books. They have movie books, and books about actors, books about trains and planes and tractors. There are story books, and books of all sorts. They have funny books, and books about sports. They have animal books. And books about people and read in a place where it's peaceful. Open a book, take a look, start to read, start to feed your mind, plant a seed, plant a seed. Watch it grow, you can go anywhere, anytime in your mind, find a book to take you there. Hello, my name is George Young. I'm the state senator for the state of Oklahoma, Senate District 48, which is in the heart of Oklahoma City. I'm so glad to be with you today and appreciate this moment to share with you one of my favorite books titled, All the Places You'll Go. All the Places You'll Go. Congratulations, today is your day. You're off to great places. You're off and away. You have brains in your head. You have feet in your shoes. You can steer yourself and direction, any direction you choose. You're on your own and you know what you know. And you are the guy who'll decide where to go. You'll look up and down streets, look them over with care. About some, you will say, I don't choose to go there. With your head full of brains and your shoes full of feet, you're too smart to go down any not-so-good street. And you may not find any you'll want to go down. In that case, of course, you'll head straight out of town. It's opener there. It's wide open air. Out there things can happen and frequently do to people as brainy and footsy as you. And when things start to happen, don't worry, don't stew. Just go right along. You'll start happening too. All the places you'll go. You'll be on your way up. You'll be seeing great sights. You'll join the high flyers who soar to high heights. You won't lag behind because you'll have the speed. You'll pass the whole gang and you'll soon take the lead. Wherever you fly, you'll be best of the best. Wherever you go, you will top all the rest. Except when you don't, because sometimes you won't. I'm sorry to say so, but sadly it's true. The bang-ups and hang-ups can happen to you. You can get all hung up in a prickly perch, and your gang will fly open. You'll be left in a lurch. 
you'll come down from the lurch with an unpleasant bump, and the chances are then that you'll be in a slump. And when you're in a slump, you're not in for much fun. Unslumping yourself is not easily done. You will come to a place where the streets are not marked. Some windows are lighted, but mostly they're dark. A place you could sprain both your elbow and chin. Do you dare to stay out? Do you dare to go in? How much can you lose? How much can you win? And if you go in, should you turn left or right? Or right and three quarters? Or maybe not quite. Or go round back and sneak in from behind. Simple it's not, I'm afraid you will find. For a man maker upper to make up his mind. You can get so confused that you'll start into race down long wiggle roads at a breaknecking pace and grind on for miles across weirdish wild space headed, I fear, toward a most useless place, the waiting place. For people just waiting, Waiting for a train to go, or a bus to come, or a plane to go, or the mail to come, or the rain to go, or the phone to ring, or the snow to snow, or waiting around for a yes or no, or waiting for their hair to grow. Everyone is just waiting, waiting for the fish to bite, or waiting for wind to fly a kite, or waiting around for a Friday night, or waiting perhaps for the Uncle Jake, or a pot to boil, or a better break or a string of pearls, or a pair of pants, or a wig with curls, or another chance. Everyone is just waiting. No, that's not for you. Somehow you'll escape all that waiting and staying. You'll find the bright places where boom bands are playing. With banner flip-flapping, once more you'll ride high. Ready for anything under the sky. Ready because you're that kind of a guy. All the places you'll go, there is fun to be done. There are points to be scored. There are games to be won. And the magical things you can do with that ball will make you the winningest winner of all. Fame! You'll be famous as famous can be with the whole wide world watching you win on TV. Except when they don't, because sometimes they won't. I'm afraid that sometimes you'll play lonely games too. Games you can't win, because you'll play against you. All alone, whether you like it or not, alone will be something. You'll be quite a lot. And when you're alone, there's a very good chance You'll meet things that scare you right out of your pants. There are some down the road between hither and yon that can scare you so much you won't want to go on. But on you'll go, through the weather be foul. On you will go, though your enemies prowl. On you will go, through the hacking cracks howl. Onward up many, a frightening creek, though your arms may get sore. And your sneakers may leak. On and on you will hike. And I know you'll hike far. And face up to your problems. Whatever they are. You'll get mixed up of course. As you already know. You'll get mixed up with many strange birds as you go. So be sure when you step. Step with care and great tact. And remember that life's. A great balancing act. Just never forget to be dexterous and deft and never mix up your right foot with your left. And you will succeed. Yes, you will indeed. 98 and a half percent guaranteed. Kid, you'll move mountains. So be your name, Buxbaum, or Bixby, or Bray, or Mordecai, Ally, Van Allen, O'Shea. You're off to great places. Today is your day. Your mounting is waiting. So get 
on your way. Blessing. Hi, this is Congresswoman Kendra Horn. Uh, I represent all of you and all of Oklahoma's 5th Congressional District uh, in U.S. Congress in Washington, D.C. I serve in the United States House of Representatives and represent about 750,000 people here in Oklahoma, uh, in Oklahoma County and Seminole and Pottawatomie counties. And that means that I am your voice in Washington, D.C. And I'm excited to be with you today. And I am going to read you one of my favorite books. It's called Grace Goes to Washington, and I hope you enjoy it. Grace Goes to Washington. So one Friday afternoon in April, Mrs. Barrington shared a large diagram of the three branches of U.S. government. But Grace Campbell could not stop daydreaming about the upcoming field trip to Washington, D.C. Grace, do you know who's in charge here? Mrs. Barrington asked. Who's in charge here, Grace repeated. Principal Perez, a few of her classmates giggled. I don't know if you can see, but there's checks and balances. We have the legislative branch, the US Congress, that's where I serve. Judicial branch, that's the court system. And then you have the executive branch, which is the president. Well, said Mrs. Barrington, I suppose you could say Principal Perez is like the executive branch here at Wilson Elementary because he's the head of our school. But right now we're talking about the U.S. government. Sorry, Grace answered. The president, he or she leads the executive branch. That's correct, Miss Barrington smiled. The president. The last bell of the day rang. We'll discuss this more next week, she announced. Student council members, Grace and Sam, don't forget you have a meeting after school. At the meeting, classroom representatives were discussing their ideas on how to spend the money raised from their holiday bake sale. So we have this student saying, a healthy mind is a healthy body, and they're discussing how to spend their money. I wonder what they're going to do. Thomas and his committee petitioned for new sports equipment. Grace and her committee thought new books for the library were the way to go. Principal Perez even offered her own suggestion. The music room sure could use some new instruments. Mr. Marshall, the media center teacher, listened carefully to all of their arguments and took notes. Wonder what they're going to decide. They're all good ideas, Grace later admitted to Sam. There's no way we'll agree before the vote next week. You know what I was thinking during the meeting, Sam asked. No, what? Said Grace. If Principal Perez is like the executive branch, I think the student council is like the legislative branch because we're the elected leaders from each class and we help make decisions for, for the school. There's the student council, can you see them? Grace considered Sam's comparison. Yeah, who knew so many people had a say in how to spend cookie money, she grumbled. The following day, Grace could hardly contain her excitement. It was finally field trip day. As the bus drove down Pennsylvania Avenue, cherry blossoms dotted the streets like pink pom-poms. You can see the cherry blossoms here. Grace and her classmates visited the Lincoln Memorial, the U.S. Capitol where the legislative branch meets. This is the U.S. Capitol. That's one of the places I work. I work there and in Oklahoma as well. And the Supreme Court building. That's where you'll find the judicial branch and the Supreme Court judges, Sam pointed out. They decide if our rules and laws are fair. Kind of like 
Mr. Marshall does at our student council meetings, Grace added. Exactly. During the tour of the White House, home of the executive branch, Grace's dream of becoming president felt more real. There she is, standing there in the Oval Office. They had their final, their final stop of the day was at the Martin Luther King Jr. Memorial. There's the Martin Luther King Jr. Memorial. Grace studied the words engraved on the monument and thought about their meaning. Make a career of humanity. Commit yourselves to the noble struggle for equal rights and you will make a greater person of yourself, a greater nation of your country, and a finer world to live in. Those are really good words. At recess the next day, arguments about what to purchase for the school grew more heated. Look at this crummy basketball, Clara complained. It's practically worthless. At least you have a ball, Fletcher groaned. These are two new books in the Ninja Wizard series, but our library doesn't have either one. Hannah lobbied the loudest for new instruments. Well, I, for one, am sick and tired of playing a recorder in music class. Principal Perez is right. A few days later, the student council's last meeting of the year was called to order. The blackboard says, bake sale, Profits vote today. Wonder what they're going to do. Excuse me, Grace interrupted. Before we vote, Thomas and I would like to introduce you to someone. This is Amon. He's new to our school. We'd like all of you to consider one more option for how to spend the bake sale money. Together, they rolled out a big pointer. I wonder what they're going to do. We're calling it the Friendship Mall, Thomas said proudly. Amon helped us design it. Oh, that looks great, the Friendship Mall. It has a mosaic. Um, we can make this ourselves. Oh, that's a great idea. Benches to sit, talk, and play. Oh, that's great. Grass, flowers. Oh, so exciting. It's a place where you can go at recess to let other students know when you need a friend, Amon explained. Next, Thomas spoke about their field trip to Washington, D.C., and Grace read a quote from Martin Luther King Jr. A finer, kinder world starts with us and the choices we make. She concluded, thank you for listening. Everyone clapped and Principal Perez wiped away a few tears. Mr. Marshall pounded his gavel. It's time to vote. After the ballots were collected from each classroom representative and the votes were tallied, Student Council President Grace Campbell peeked at the results and grinned. It's a unanimous decision, she announced excitedly. All members are in favor of, what do you think it is? The French, the Friendship Mall. The room filled with happy cheers. Principal Perez took a seat and then much like the president signs a bill into law, she approved the election results and making the decision official. Today, you put your own wants and needs aside in order to serve others, she said, beaming. That is true leadership. This is great. Look at their friendship mall that they made. This time, everyone agreed. The end. Grace goes to Washington. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, again, this is Congresswoman Kendra Horn, and I represent you in Washington, D.C., and I look forward to meeting some of you sometime soon, and I hope you are enjoying your summer and Freedom School, and have a wonderful evening. Bye-bye. Dance break.
today, first day of school. A whole lot of new students out there heading off to their first class.
Recognition. Recognize. Recognize. I said I have recognition. 